Hi everyone, I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, here to give you an overview of the SpaceX Boca Chica facility as of early July 2021. All the following photos and videos were captured by NASA Spaceflight team members Mary and Tyler Gray, as well as our team of robotic cameras. Over the past month, SpaceX's Boca Chica facility has been continuing its push towards an orbital flight. Although Elon Musk's original July 1st launch date has come and gone, teams are still racing to fly Starship to a near-orbital trajectory. Also this month, we saw a few name changes across the entire Starship program. Starships used to go by the designation serial number, or SN. For example, SN8 or SN15. That has now changed to SHIP, or S for short. So now we'll have SHIP-20 or S-20 for short. Similarly, boosters used to go by BN for booster number. Now that is simply booster or B for short. So BN-3 has now become booster-3 or B-3. Finally, the Raptor engines now go by three separate designations. The center engines of Starship and Super Heavy are now RC number for Raptor Center. The outer engines of Super Heavy are now RB for Raptor Boost, and the vacuum engines on Starship are now RVAC number. This will help differentiate the three versions of Raptor. <laughs> yeah, it can be a little confusing, and this is actually the second name change for the Starship program, since late 2019 when they changed from Mark to Serial Number for Starships, where Mark III became SN1. But anyway, back to Boca Chica. The star of the show in recent days has been Super Heavy Booster 3. It finished stacking in the high bay on June 29th, and to many people's surprise, it was rolled out to Pad A only two days later. Booster 3 was originally bookmarked for the first orbital Starship flight, but Elon Musk said on Twitter that there were some major design changes made between Boosters 3 and 4. Now, Boosters 3 will only be used for ground testing, while the much upgraded Booster 4 will actually take flight with Starship 20 on top. Sections of Booster 4 have been spotted around the site, but stacking has not yet begun in the high bay. Meanwhile, Booster 3 was placed atop a modified adapter on Pad A. Starship and Super Heavy use different attachment points for the launch pad, so an adapter is necessary to make Super Heavy fit onto the Starship launch pads. The prototype booster completed an ambient pressure test on July 8th, where it was pressurized using roughly room temperature nitrogen gas. On July 12th, Booster 3 successfully completed its cryogenic proofing test. It was loaded with a relatively small amount of liquid nitrogen to ensure that it could hold a cryogenic liquid while pressurized. Booster 3 will also perform one or more static fire tests. Currently, only one Raptor engine has been installed on July 11th. SpaceX has no shortage of Raptors on site, as Mary caught several deliveries recently. This includes at least two so-called Raptor boosts. Raptor boosts are just normal Raptor engines that will be fixed in place making up the outer rings of 20 engines on the Super Heavy booster. They will not gimbal, however, they will be able to throttle. Elon said on Twitter, the boost variant won't actually be much different than the normal one, and that both will have the same thrust. Previously, Raptor Boost would have had a higher thrust than the center engines. In addition, Tyler captured the first Raptor vacuum engine arrival on June 27th. Elon confirmed on Twitter that this engine will actually fly on Ship 20, while also confirming that this early version of the engine has an impressive 378 seconds of specific impulse. Elon says he hopes to increase it to 380 seconds in the future. Specific impulse is essentially a mark of efficiency for a rocket engine. To put it simply, the higher the number of seconds, the better, usually. Just next door to pad A, the thrust ram was installed on pad B on July 7th. This device pushes on an empty engine mount to simulate the force of engines firing, all without risking damage to any engines. It will likely be used during the testing of Ship 20 ahead of its orbital flight. Nearby, work continued on the orbital launch site. The integration tower has been expanded with a seventh section, and its eighth segment is currently finishing assembly. The eighth section features one longer column, which may play a part in the booster catching system. Frankencrane, the massive crane used to stack the integration tower has been extended for a second time. This will allow it to stack the eighth section of the tower and potentially the future integration crane on top of that. Equipment has been installed around the base of the tower as well. These may be for operating the tower's elevator, crane, or perhaps the catching system. The launch stand and surrounding equipment is making progress as well. 
the launch table is coming together too, and will be stacked on top of the stand in the not too distant future. No more work has been done on the ground support equipment or GSE tanks. GSE 1 and 2 are still at the pad, and GSE 4 has been scrapped. GSE 3 was recently moved back into the midbay for unknown reasons. With the lack of any new activity, it seems that they may have run into problems with the tanks, or that something else is behind schedule. Strangely, GSC-5 seems to be getting ready for stacking. The forward section was spotted in front of the midbay on July 12th, hooked up to a crane. It seems like they may be starting to resume stacking soon. However, the shells that will cover the GSC tanks are still being assembled. Four of eight are currently completed, one of which will be used as the water tower for the orbital launch site. The other seven shells will provide insulation and protection for the GSC tanks. Also at the production site, Stacking of Ship 20 has begun. The first two sections were joined in the mid-bay recently, and others should follow suit soon. A ring stack with hundreds of heat shield tiles on it was spotted near the mid-bay on July 12th. This will likely be a part of Ship 20. Also, a nose cone with some curved heat shield tiles on its flap covers was spotted. To date, no nose cone was ever seen sporting heat shield tiles. Whether this is for Ship 20 or just a test article remains to be seen. A different nose cone was stacked onto what would have been Ship 17's barrel section on July 12th. This nose cone did not have any tiles on it, nor any flap covers. It's currently unclear what the purpose of this nose cone will be. The interface between Starship and Super Heavy was tested on June 30th. A Starship aft skirt and a Super Heavy forward skirt were connected to ensure that the vehicles would attach correctly on the launch pad. It's not known if these sections were part of real vehicles or just test articles. At the scrapyard, Starship SN 7.2 was scrapped. This test article was used to prototype 3mm thick steel rings, instead of the 4mm thick steel used today. This would, in theory, lead to significant mass savings. Currently, no progress has been made on using 3mm steel, even though it seems that SN 7.2 was successful. Speaking of test tanks, BN 2.1 completed its test program in June. It appeared to be a success, as no leaks formed in the tank. BN 2.1 was a subscale test tank, made from parts that would have been part of Booster 2. It ensured that the super heavy engine section and forward dome could withstand flight pressures. BN 2.1 was rolled back from the launch site on June 26th. It was placed in storage near the propellant production site, and any future use is unknown. Directly next to BN 2.1, a new mystery structure has been assembled. Its purpose is unknown, but is likely some sort of ground support hardware. Also at the propellant production site, SpaceX is installing several natural gas generators to supply additional electricity to the site. This will likely complement the two giant solar rays at the Boca Chica site, likely when it's not too sunny or large amounts of power are needed. And that's it for this video. If you have any feedback, be sure to leave it in the comments below. This helps us to make every new video even better than the last one. And if you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member, with several cool perks available for our channel members. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.